Okay, hello. Uh, welcome to the stream. Um, clearly, I've got a bug with my um, my countdown timer. So it looks like um, uh, because it's counting underneath zero, um, and you know the panel system doesn't really support negative numbers, then it's going haywire. So that might be a good um, thing to fix first. Um, <clears> okay, <throat> hey, uh, who do we have in chat today? Hello, Mixel. Um, welcome to the stream. Um, is my microphone going okay? Great. Well, so the change I've made there is just so that if um, second, second, second. yeah, so it doesn't count down anymore if the if there are no seconds left and there are no minutes left. Um, I might just put another condition in there just to make sure that um, that seconds doesn't stay doesn't the number of seconds left doesn't become a negative even if um, even if we're out of minutes. So that will do on that one for now. Um, what I think I'm going to go do to start with is. Um, I'll use the Anim Color Swap demo. Um, I was thinking of adding some more standard functions. Um, one thing I need to do is, um, or one thing I need to add is, um, I was working on Wonder Boy the other day and I realized I don't really have a standard function for making an actor wrap around the screen. And so I figured I might just create some standard functions that do exactly what um, uh, what I did on that project. So um, I'll put that right into there. I will call that uh, wrap screen. I'll do right to start with. Um, and I'll just have a condition, which is if actor x is greater, uh, actor x is greater than or equal to camera x plus x res plus 16. So that way, if the actor is more than 16 pixels, um, to the the uh, sorry more more than sixteen pixels off the right side of the screen, uh, then I will uh, make the actor wrap around. So I'll just go 
base. Um, oops, not set variable. Um, I want actor position. So I will set that to camera. Ah, oh, uh, set it to actor x minus x res minus sixteen. I think that will work, so I'll give that a go. So I'll make it so that the player has no collisions because um, a scorpion map is surrounded by default is surrounded by one layer of solid tiles um, that you don't see because of the camera bounds. Um, so I'll make set it to none so that the player should be able to walk through them, and I only had it so that. Um, wrap screen right that was the only one i've done so far so i'll give that a test so just see if there's any bugs in my new feature on new function uh and yes um it's bouncing off the side should be wrapping all the way around to the other side so I'll need to review my logic. So actor X. Now that should have subtracted the X resolution. Hmm. Just going to check that X resolution is actually being set correctly. So I'm just going to go. Um, so I'll make it when it walks off the right side of the screen, that'll quit with what the X resolution is equal to. So the X resolution should be 256. Oh. Now that is... That is very weird. Um, that might be a core engine bug. Oh. No, that was my mistake, actually. I should have... Um, it should have been printing the X resolution. Actually, while I'm here, I'll make it print the Y resolution as well. Okay, no, we do have a, um, we do have a bug here. Um, I can work around it for now, um, but I'll need to investigate. But basically, this X res. Yeah, so that's supposed to be set to whatever the screen is. Unfortunately, for some reason at the moment, it's setting it to, um, it's changing that value to zero. So I'll have to come back and fix that later, but for now I will just, um, I will just hard code 256 in there. Great, and then... And let's try that. Oh, I just realized the name of the stream is wrong. I'm not, not working on the Pico 8 conversion today, so I'll just uh, edit the, um, see if we can edit the broadcast. Uh, 
Uh, just see if I need the broadcast name. Hopefully that's correct now. And that's still acting strange. Done something wrong here, so. Uh, you can, but it's not working at the moment for some reason. But even even setting the position doesn't seem to work um, as expected. Hello, Griffin. Welcome to the stream. Let me just... Um, Camera X minus 16. No, there is something weird going on there. Just try changing that amount. So I've got collision turned off. Uh, rep screen. Um, it's embarrassing that this is happening on stream, but um, I guess when you're working with the experimental version, um, things like this will happen. Okay, so... Now that, okay, so sixteen might have just been a little bit too far out of frame. Uh, I'll just try using X res again. I don't know if it'll work or not. So if I set it to actor X minus X res minus eight. Okay, so maybe x res was working and just, um, uh, just it was a bit too much. Um, yeah, so because I'd set it to 16, I guess it was just too far out of the screen and so it was bouncing back before this actually run. Um, but I think 8 should be a fairly safe value for um, – because, uh, <clears throat> I mean, I guess most things – in a game where you want actors to wrap around, uh, most actors are only going to be 16 pixels wide, so having it at 8 is probably all right. So you might just change that to uh, greater than 8. And let's make one for the opposite direction. Wrap screen left. So I'm just going to go if it's less than, uh, less than camera x minus 8. Then we want to move it to actor x plus x res plus 8. And I'll just check that. Um, let's do a wrap screen left.
Well, okay, that's weird. So I can wrap around to the left, but going to the right is broken. How did I break that? So left is fine. It's greater than... If I had it as greater than or equal, Okay, it goes back and forth, okay? Actually, I'm going to just try... Just going to test something real quick. Just want to check if it's a problem with my greater than or equal, or if it's a problem with um, it's a problem with moving it. Okay, so not quite sure why that is, but that's that's all right. So greater than or equal camera X is eight. Set it to actor X minus X res minus eight. So that will wrap around back to the left. Uh, let's make um, screen top. So this will be if actor y is less than equal to y minus 8. Then we want to move the actor y plus y res plus 8. Okay, so if the oh, uh, top is okay, bottom is what I want to change. So I want to say if it's greater than or equal to camera Y plus Y res plus 8, then we move it to actor Y minus Y res minus 8. And let's do a wrap screen top. screen bottom Okay, didn't work on bottom, but the wrap the top is working. So I just need to work out why that is.
greater or equal to camera y plus y raised plus 8. I have got wrap screen bottom set up. Just going to add a, just going to make it quit. So that's one surefire way of knowing that um, um, that at least the function is triggering. Uh, okay, so it's not going down far enough to trigger. Uh, I might need to just check. Uh, I think I know why it is. I just want to try a couple of other things. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, I'll turn that back to turn that back to none. So the problem is because that uh, the center point of the player doesn't get underneath. Um, doesn't get that far down for some reason. So I think there might be an engine bug I need to look into, but uh, in any case, um, I should be able to just... I will just work around it a bit by um, reducing that amount. Um, but, yeah, so um, the if I've got collision type of none, it means that I can walk through tiles... But it doesn't mean I can walk off the screen indefinitely because then we're going to have problems where it's trying to draw the character outside of outside of the level memory. Having said that, I don't think that's as much of a problem nowadays because I've got it fairly intelligently cutting off the parts of the character that I can't draw. So I might be able to just make it that you can, if, uh, if you do have a collision type of none, you can walk infinitely off the level. And that would that would certainly fix the problems I'm having here. Although it's weird. Okay, so got as far down as the neck. Yeah, so that oh I'll I'll just make it a if I make it a small collision box, maybe that will um Maybe that will fix it. Yeah, okay, so it was all to do with the collision box. Um, the collision box shouldn't actually be relevant because I have got collision set as none. So that is a core bug that I'll need to um I'll need to come back to. Uh, I'll just check to see if I can use the same value of eight this time. Yep, okay, so we've got some wrapping functions, and I can make that part of the core Scorpion library, so anyone making a game can just use this method um, for wrapping around the level. Once I've done a little bit more work on um, uh, working out what those bugs are with um, trying to leave the screen...
Well, um, what was I going to do next? I'm going to have another look at my bullet hell game, see if I can, um, uh, get it running a bit faster on, um, Oh well, yeah, get it a bit, um, bit more, get it a bit smoother on uh, a five hundred settings. Um, so there's so much going on at once that it's going to be very difficult to get it um, to have everything running at fifty frames a second. But I should be able to use um, my interpolation. Uh, to make it, um, you know, at, at least so far as the player is concerned, make it look like it's running at 50 frames a second. Um, I'm not sure how fast my stream is actually going, but um, it feels pretty janky as it is. So I'm going to go through each of these actors. Um, I do. Yes, I'm going to want to double these speeds. Um, actually, I won't quite double that. I'll make it 12 or something. And let's um, we'll go to startup. Um, we're going to want to set... Um, Go display. We want to set at set at twenty five hertz, but then um, we want to go set camera follow, and we want to turn on camera interpolate and sprite interpolate, and let's see how that feels. So that will only be the logic will only be running at um, twenty five hertz, but the because the player is a sprite, it should. Um, oh, hello, Amiga Show. Uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, yeah, because the player is a sprite, hopefully the the player movement will still feel smooth. Um, I guess we will find out. Yeah. Um, the player movement does um, uh, does feel quite nice and smooth. Um, oh, I was having some weird glitches with Parallax there. I don't know what that was about. Um, what else can I fix? Well... Um, because I changed the frame rate to 25 hertz, I'm gonna, I'll make the, um, I'll make it spawn twice as many bullets. And the other thing I'll, I need to do is, um, go fix position. So this, um, this fixed position I've got on the timer expire and everything what that basically does is that it um, makes sure that... Well, ba basically, the camera is moving around all the time. So you can see this is what the level looks like. So to give the impression that there's a big boss there, the camera is constantly going up and down like this. And so I'm adding to the player position um, every few frames to match the um, camera movement. Uh, otherwise, it will look like the player's drifting off screen. Um, well, there's certainly a lot more bullets, but 
It's um, it's killed the frame rate. It um doesn't really look that good. Uh, bear in mind, I am. This is still Amiga five hundred settings, so um, uh, this is what it would look. So I think I think it still looks pretty good for um, yeah, base Amiga five hundred, but still not really that um that fantastic. So I'm gonna undo. Uh, I might just reduce the number of projectiles there are. Um, six. Hello, acid bottle. Um, it says that you're first time chat, but I was pretty sure you've been on a stream before. Unless I'm just remembering you being on a Mixel stream. Um, anyway, that's a little better. Um, no, the, the projectiles are all sprites, so the size of it doesn't affect the, um, performance at all. Um, anyway, I'm just going to set everything back the way it was, except for keeping it at, um, 25 frames. Well, I think that's working okay. Um, I am, uh, I am fairly happy with that. Um, so, um, performance on A five hundred settings with uh, no fast RAM. I think that was okay. Um, I will just make one change to the parallax. I think I might just make the parallax go a bit faster. Because uh, it doesn't really matter, the parallax speed um, going fast, it doesn't really matter. Uh, like, it's not going to affect the performance uh, having it run faster. Um... Uh, as a bottle, in regards to your question, uh, with the vertical scroller, if you have max map height, can you reach the top and then teleport to another location on X axis, effectively doubling your height onto strips? Uh, the short answer is yes. And in fact, um, uh, Mixels uh, did that, uh, did something similar to that on Creeping Me Out, where 
the motorcycle level would uh, wrap around several times, wrap around um, horizontally several times. There's no reason why you couldn't do it uh, vertically. Uh, just the only real problem is the um, you would get a frame skip for a frame or two. Uh, that might not be too bad if you sort of plan it strategically. So, um, y you know, you, you get to the top of the screen and then it goes down to the bottom right. Sorry, you get to the top of the map and then it snaps down to the bottom right of the map. Um, yeah, if, if you did it in a way that, um, like, there wasn't really anything going on screen or maybe... I was just thinking of um, uh, Swiv, S W I V. I think like that. That was basically one big long level. The whole thing was basically one big long level. But when you got to, I think when you like fought a boss, and then after that, it would take a few seconds to load, and then you could continue. But it was all seamless, so it wasn't like. Um, you know, the screen went to black or anything. Um, so what? No. Well, I, um, I might work on Jazz Jackrabbit for a bit. So this one was a bit experimental. Um, yeah, I'll just go for um, a twelve hundred fast RAM. Oh, now, have I, what have I got this? Fire. Don't know what that is about. I'll get rid of that code block. Um, okay, I've got it running at 25 hertz and interpolate camera. Oh, Jazz is looking a little bit sickly there. Um, Let's have a look. Okay, because uh, I have got yeah all of these are set of sprites. Um, I'll need to I'll need to reshuffle my um, my palette um, so that the colors that Jazz needs are um, uh. Uh, down uh, uh, within the sprite range because jazz is a sprite because since I'm running it in 25 hertz mode um, that's the only way to keep uh, jazz himself smooth and let's um let's make him run a bit faster uh, that jump height should be a lot more than 50 I'll try to work out what it should actually be Oh. Okay, let's um map. Um so this is a huge map. Um it's um uh it's not gonna be able to run on a standard Amiga five hundred or even a even Amiga six hundred. I think it's gonna need to be two meg of RAM regardless of what um uh, what Amiga you have? Oh, sorry, uh, two, two meg of RAM. Um, but that should work on ECS Amigas if you've got an ECS Amiga with two meg of RAM. 
Oh, and it doesn't have to be all chip RAM. Like, I think maybe one meg of chip and one meg of slow will be enough, or one meg of fast. Okay, so it should be able to jump about seven tiles, so seven times 16. About 112 is how tall Jazz... I think Jazz can jump to about that high. So let's... um. Uh, let's try make it about one one two. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's um, actually. I'll use the fastest mega just so that it will um, boot and boot faster. Um, yeah, Acid Bottle, if you're moving the camera from one side of the level to the other, it shouldn't take more than a couple of frames, so um, it may not be noticeable if there's a pause in the action, like, you know, you've just fought a boss, and then, um, so th then you have it skip. Um, but e even if it's scrolling when it happens... It might not be that noticeable to the user if it's just one time in the game it freezes for a couple of frames. Whoa. Okay, there's a few weird things going on there. Uh, let's have a look. So, jump speed. Uh, now, that's one problem is it shouldn't be bouncing on the ground. Oh, and um, I need to fix... Um, where are we? Is that the... Okay, so the objects, so I'll put the slopes on the objects layer. Okay, so I think it's jumping to about the right height, but it's not, um, oh, okay, so I've got some bugs to fix there. It's jumping to about the right height, but it's still, um, uh, it feels a bit slow, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the gravity back to how it was, back to one, but then double the jump speed. Oh, actually, no, not double. Yeah, I think that's about right, and then I'll set the, um, so 112 pixels is about the jump height that I wanted. Yep, that's starting to feel a bit more like Jazz Jackrabbit. Um... It's running about the right speed. Um, okay, Mixel says, can frame weight, frame weight or something be smoothly ramped for an effect a bit like the end of level in R-Type and it goes in slow motion, I wonder. Yeah, um, oh, it's not really tested, but frame weight, frame weight can be changed at real time. So there's no particular reason why you would need to um, 
Uh, sorry, the uh, sorry, you should be able to change it in real time without any bugs. Um, Admittedly, you can't set frame weight to a fractional, so the difference between one setting for frame weight and another might be quite um, substantial. Although, having said that, um, you know, you could, because you could change it, like if you change it every frame, just have it going up and down, you could sort of get, you could maybe get. You know, instead of like 50 frames a second or 25 frames a second, you could have something in the middle like, say, 35 frames a second if, if you're constantly switching from one to another. Or I, I guess um, you could also blip... A lot of invisible stuff too. Though having said that, uh, Scorpion does try to um, uh, make it so that you um, uh, that you like if if you've got something invisible, then it will basically try to cut out all of the pixels, so it's not really blitting anything at all. Um, now I've just realized I have got, um, so I've got these slopes, but I don't really have a way of blocking jazz from entering a certain area. So let's, uh, let, let's make a, um, completely solid block. Uh, all right. Uh, I need to rename that to P slope. Flat. Uh, let's edit that block image. Just gonna wait for a good old um, Paint Shop Pro. Uh, I have a friend that he was working on a game where he wanted the, like when you beat the final boss, he wanted it to slow down. He deliberately wanted the frame rate to slow down. So that's exactly what he did is he just covered the screen with um, just massive objects um, to deliberately to make the frame rate janky. And that was... Um, that was because it was an indie game, and he sort of wanted wanted it to feel like it was very indie, and sort of not not like a you know a, a commercial game where it doesn't have slowdowns at all. Okay, I'm going to call this one solid block, and then I'm going to use that red. Uh, then if, am I going to need to, uh, I guess we need to reopen. Ah, oh, no, I will need to go back to the maps thing and then click edit again because when I do that, it will regenerate the, the, the tile set with my new block, solid block. Uh, let's, um, let's put that. Something like that. Okay. Um, well, let's um, let's see how that goes.
Uh, Griffin says, well, I think if you insert a giant bob with only four pixels at the corners, that would slow down everything a lot. Yes, yes, that would that would do. Um, let's have a look. Oh, okay, now that... Oh, maybe I don't have it. Maybe I don't have it blocking when it's going up. I have to check that. It is a bit weird. Oh, unless maybe I didn't set the did I not set the block as solid? No, okay, so we'll untick is slope. And I'm gonna say, well this is a solid block. Um just gonna open that map again. Might replace that block there with a, an edged one just to make it a bit smoother when we're running off the side there. Um, I have no idea how physics and things like that work in the original Jazz Jack Rabbit. I'm just sort of, um, you know, going by my memory of the game. Though I do have a copy of it somewhere. Um, if I need to bring it up again for reference. Yep, okay, so that's um, that's basically what we expect. Feels maybe a little bit janky because I've got it running in 25 hertz mode. Um, but the with the sprite interpolation and the camera interpolation, it's forcing the camera and the sprite to move at 50 hertz. I'm not sure if I want to keep that or not, or if I want to um, uh, Yeah, I'm not sure if I want it to if like I may just make it a fifty hertz game and then just say, you know, you need you know me you need an Omega twelve hundred or something to run it. Uh, which may be worthwhile doing anyway because um like in e any case you're gonna need two mega RAM just because this level is massive. Now, I'll work on something slightly interesting. Um, do you see we've got um, on the original map, we've got the carrots. And so the obvious solution is, well, because the carrots don't move, they just sit there. Uh, we'll make them a block rather than an actor so that we can pick them up. Well, so that they can be on the screen without any performance hit. Um, just the problem with that is, um, because it's not, it's not a, well, if we render it with blocks, we still need four different blocks for the whole carrot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to make four different blocks and make it that if you collide with any of those blocks, then it um, it picks up the whole carrot instead of just um, pick, yeah picks up the whole carrot. Um, instead of just one of those four corners. So let's go to Sprite as resource. Um, 
cool thing cool thing about Sprite is resource for Jazz Jackrabbit is it has basically everything. It even has like the fake copper skies and the the tiles for the three D mini games, though I definitely wouldn't be able to bring the three D mini games to Scorpion. Um, so just need to find, I think it's called Misk or Manius. There we go. So I think there's a carrot in here somewhere. Huh. I know there's a carrot in here, I just can't see it anywhere. Have I gone blind? Okay, so it can't be at the top. Carrot must be around here somewhere. Weird. Can anyone else see the carrot on the sprite sheet? So I would have thought it would have been up here because it's one of these, it's a collectible. Oh well, I'll cheat a bit and I'll just grab it from the um, um, it's from a screenshot or something. Well, there are some carrots there. That one, right there. Because um, I can just cut that one out of the background. Okay, so let's um, paste that in there. Uh, let's do the perceptual of one. We get, just get rid of the blue. So now we've got carrot block. Well, we've got carrots and the, the block atlas. We just need to add. Um, let's, um, uh, where did I put it? Was it under maps? Yep, there we go. And call this, um, carrot TL. Um, now let's have a let's check these. So it's not solid, it's not, sh um, it's not a platform, not a slope, it's not fast split, it's not invisible. On left. Okay, so we've got a carrot. 
Um, we, uh, I'm probably going to want to manipulate the tile ID so that they're all together in the block. Uh, sorry, in the um, uh, in the atlas in the in the tile set. So let's have a look at them. So yeah, because they're all over the place like that, it's going to be a bit hard for me to actually um, uh, do anything with them. So uh, I'll need to change the tile IDs. So let's go back to. So top left, I'll set that to 16. Set that one to 17. And then this will be 32. Oh, of course, it's zero index. So it should, so it should start from 15 and then 16. 15, 16, and then that one should be 31 and 32. And hopefully that'll work. No, I ah. Oh. No, I had it right the first time, so I'll fix that. Um, so let's. Yep. So sixteen is the first one on a new row. So sixteen, seventeen, be thirty-two, thirty-three. Uh, let's go to edit the map again. There we go, that's exactly as I want it. So I can put a, um, I can stamp a carrot on the object layer. Might stamp a couple more here just because I know those are meant to be the candy canes, but I'll just stamp them there just for testing. Um, now, if I run that, then, um, Nothing should happen, like if I go to pick up the carrots, it shouldn't be anything noticeable. Okay, so they're there. I can't pick them up. Uh, I know what feels wrong is that um, Jazz can instantly turn around. That doesn't really feel right, so I'm going to tweak the um, the acceleration when he's in mid-air. Oh, no, not quite. Oh, it's a little better, but not uh, not quite perfect. I'll, I'll set it so that the mid-air acceleration is the same as um, when the player's running left and right. Yeah, I think that feels about right. Um, I'm going to need to spend some more time playing the original game, but the jumping feels um, feels pretty good to me. Hmm. Um, I've got some weird... I must have a code block attached to the attack event, because every time I push fire, it just bounces back and forward anyway we're going to make it so that we can collect these carrots and because we can't just use this destroy block because we need to do it for all all four corners at once so let's um 
Um, oh, I need to make um, need to make a code folder. I haven't actually added any code blocks to it yet. So I'm going to call this um, collectible top left. Uh, collectible top right. Collectible bottom left and collectible bottom right. And let's um, player, go, we'll use player overlap. So that's bottom left. Mm. Um, so acid bottle says that's a neat trick with a carrot. Simple sixteen by sixteen is right and trim it here for collectibles. Um, yeah, I was thinking like you could probably do something similar with on Wonder Boy. You've got the fruit, so you could change the fruit from actors into blocks. And for ones where the fruit is halfway between tiles, you could do something like this where you use two blocks to represent the fruit. Anyway, I'll just check. Uh, oh, uh, I was supposed to do top left for that. Top right, top left, bottom right, bottom left. Okay, so I've hooked up all these code blocks. They don't currently do anything. So what I'm going to do for top left is I'm going to do, well, I'm going to make it that if you collide with the top left block, then it gets rid of all those other blocks. So I will go to uh, level set block and change current block to none. I'll go block x plus 1 to none. Um, block y plus 1 to none. And then the bottom corner will be block x one well that would be cool um i haven't actually had an opportunity to watch um uh hoffman's stream uh so i take it um i take it hoffman does uh, pro tracker stuff. Well, uh, I'm just going to give it a quick try now just to make sure that, um, that we can at least interact with the top left corner to pick up the carrot, which we can. But you can see, you know, if we if we interact with the right corner, that um, uh, yeah. So we need to be really up in the top left corner in order to be able to get the carrot. Um, ah, oh, and I yeah, I guess because it's only that top left corner. Also, because I think I don't have Jazz's collision box very, um, yeah, I've only got a tiny collision box for some reason, so um, I need to make it so that we can interact with all four of those corners, which would be easy enough. We will just go, so if we're at the bottom left, then I need to set variable of block y will be block y minus 1. And then we can go to our collectible top right. So I'm basically saying here on this code block, I want to run the code block for top left, but uh, make sure that I change the block point and the block Y so that it's in the correct place. Um, so I'll do that for the other ones so this one will be 
top right will be block x equals uh, block uh, block x minus one, uh, and then for bottom right, it's uh, I need to adjust the block pointer on both um, uh, both axes. Okay, I hope that's going to work. Okay, uh, Griffin says, with the same trickery, I could, like, add an invisible block that once collided triggers blocks nearby, right? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, in fact, I think... Um, uh... I think we might have done something like that in um, uh, I think we did something like that in Chaos Guns, which was a backbone port, but I'm not sure if we used blocks to do the trigger. I think we just used events so that when you walked into an event zone you would um, uh, sorry when you walked into an event zone, it would make so, it would change some blocks. So I think there was something like there was a there was a terminal that you could interact with, and once you touch the terminal, then it would unlock a gate on the other side of the level. And unlocking the gate was just deleting the blocks. Anyway, that um, that looks oh. I, yeah, I think it's just the collision box is too small, but um, yeah, I'll make the collision box a bit bigger because at the moment it's it's a bit ridiculous. But the carrots are working. Um, I'm going to change it to, um, uh, I'm going to get rid of the, um, the 50 hertz, sorry, 25 hertz, and then I just need to adjust all these, um, so that would be 5, 5, oh, 0, 5. Um, let's set the jump speed to 11. Um, actually, I'll leave those ones alone. I'll just see what it feels like on the Amiga 1200 settings. Uh, yeah, so stock Amiga 1200, no fast RAM. I guess if I ever do release this and I say that, um, oh yeah, that's that feels feels a lot like Jazz Jackrabbit. Um, ah, um, although when I'm falling down, there it is stuttering just because it's bringing so many tiles in at once. Um, because it is a real, you know, compared to most, I can't really think of that many Amiga games that, you know, have characters that run as fast as this, except for maybe um, Tear Away Thomas. But for now, I'll say that you need to have, um, you need to have some fast RAM and an, um, an Amiga 1200. Um... Which I think is fair because 
you know, the original Jazz Jackrabbit was designed for four eighty sixes in, you know, sort of the the mid nineties. So I think it's okay if it doesn't run on a you know an Amiga five hundred from the eighties. There are some weird camera quirks with um, when I hit the ground. Maybe something to do with the slope, but it, it seems to snap upwards. Yeah, anyway, I think that's feeling pretty good. Oh, and because, um, uh, let's have a look. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn off, um, sprite interpolation and I will make, I will turn off, um, only sprite for all of these. Okay, Acid Bottle says, never thought about it as yet. Do blocks also follow the rules of Z order or is that actors and sprites only? <laughs> Um, no, blocks don't follow the rules of Z order. You can only have one, um, you can only have one, um, block on a tile. So you can't, you can't sort of have blocks overlaying each other, but you can't, there, uh, you can't have foreground blocks. You can have foreground tiles, so, for example, I can hide behind here. Um, oh, now that's a bit disappointing. So, um, yeah, I guess maybe just because the gravity's... Uh, so there is some noticeable stutter when I fall. So, hmm, I might want to put it back in um, 25 hertz mode or fake. Um, um, yeah, I actually, I think I'll, um, or what else could I do? What if I, uh, I'm going to turn back on, um, sprite and camera interpolation and see what it looks like, um, when I fall. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, that is a problem. So you see, when I fall, the scrolling is fine now. Scrolling looks good. But Jazz himself is sort of uh, flickering. So, um, yeah. So, um, what I'm going to do, I'll need to change Jazz back into a um, uh, the only sprite. And I think I'm going to have to, um, you know, in order to get the sprite looking good, uh, I think I am going to have to make this an AGA game. Um, so I've already reduced the palette a lot because the original game, you know, being v VGA PC, it was 256 colors. I've already reduced that down to 32 colors. Um, 
Looks a little weird when he's falling, but it's not too bad. Uh, so what I'm going to do next is I am going to set up a special palette, special section of the palette just for sprites, which is something we can do on AGA. So I'm going to turn on AGA as mandatory, and I'm going to say, well, our sprite range is at 33 to 47. So that gives us 15 new colors that we can use for sprites. So let's go back to our Jazz Jack Rabbit sprite rip. Um, fortunately, this is going to take me a few minutes to um, uh, copy and paste some values. So let's grab uh, grab that, paste that as a new image. Um, Let's um, trim that down. I uh, I don't want these, like, I, I want to sort of get an average of the colors used here, but I don't need to get those ones of Jazz dying because, um, you know, we don't, the uh, Jazz Jackrabbit dying doesn't need to be a sprite. It can be just a regular, um, regular bob because it doesn't need to scroll around smoothly. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna replace the background with um, a purple color so that it's quite distinct. Um, there, uh, there we go. Oops. Okay, um, well, I'm going to say, well, I want to decrease that to a 16 color palette. Actually, no, I'm not going to use Paint Shop Pro to do that. Um, uh, I just find XN View works better with. Um, uh, color reduction. Oops. Okay, so if I go change color depth to 16 colors apply to image no dithering that's what we want uh, i'll save that i'll still use um paint shop pro to get the color values and that may take a few minutes so apologies about the um about the delay um so let's have a look so let's grab some of these colors and copy them into our expanded palette. A nice uh, 48 color palette.
I'll skip that one. And I should just have four more left, which I do. So I've got this color that's close to white. Um, I might as well have 24 bit color turned on. Let's paste in those final colors, and then we should be able to play it. Okay, I'll just double check. Uh, 16. Oh, actually, um, 16 wide sprites. I think these are mostly 32 wide. So I might as well use um, 32 wide sprites because um, I have AGA set as mandatory anyway. And then maybe later on I can look at using um, some spare sprite channels for things like um, uh, the, the player projectiles. Whoa. Okay, no, that is very weird. That is a um, that is a scorpion engine bug. So I will need to. I'll make a quick note that I need to fix that. Um, it looks like because um, I have been making some changes recently with um, the data format. So I must have just done something that corrupted. Um, uh, wider sprites. So it's just another note, something I need to fix. Um, so I'll just set it back to 16 wide sprites and that should work fine. Yeah, okay, so that's it's looking fairly reasonable. I think there must have been some that I missed with um or was there? Are these all only sprites? Okay, yeah, so there's um I'll need to tweak the sprites later because of how it automatically maps the color palette. There's some inconsistency, so it looks like it you it uses a different combination of colors when it's um, jumping up and down, uh, which is all right. So we'll um, we will come back to that at some stage. Um, Now, I'll do a bit of tidy up on the map there. It's a huge, huge map. It's going to take me um, quite a while to repaint everything. Um, and let's look at this tile set. So, yeah, okay. So, let's, um, let's use that as a reference. And then um, we've got a cave entrance there. Don't know which one exactly that is, but that one looks. Yeah, it's probably that that one. So that looks. Um... Ah. No, I don't know if it really matters, but that isn't the correct um, cave entrance.
that one. No, that doesn't really matter. I think that looks okay anyway. Um, well, I guess it makes sense to get some um, actual shooting in there. I'm just going to, while I'm here... Oh, while I'm here, I'll just do a little bit of tidy up on the map. Uh, maybe it'd be faster if I <laughs> reverse engineered the map format and then um, converted that rather than trying to manually paint over uh, every tile. Oh, yep, that's the correct one to put in there. That's the correct one for there. All right, well, I'll leave the map painting for now. So let's have a look at um, on attack. Yeah, let's um, let's make a new code block for um, shoot. Okay, so Jazz's default projectile is that tiny, tiny bullet right there. Let's grab that out. Um, so tiny, it's almost worth not worth making it a sprite I guess I may as well um, use the sprite channels if I've got them uh, let's add that to where are we Jackrabbit, sprites, so I had a folder called misc. Oh, bullet. I don't actually know what this is called, if it's called a bullet or a laser or whatever. Uh, 
Oh, and I need to add a animation strip, so I'm going to call this um, anim jazz bullet. And well, it probably makes sense to have a speed of 10 at least. So it would need to be faster than um, Jazz himself. And I'll just have, I'm just, I only really need to set it for left and right. There we go. Okay, so basic. I'll set that as a, um, set that to projectile. Um, should really destroy if it hits anything, so I'll do that. Um, there's no reason for it to go off screen, so I'll make it um, destroy if it's off screen. And I'm going to set the recycle to trash, so just to make absolutely sure it gets destroyed when it goes off screen. So let's um uh I guess I should set up my attack directions. These are all going to be the same as the um the movement. Actually, that's a good point. I probably shouldn't have attack direction set so that it just plays the idle or the moving animation depending on whether I'm shooting or not. But I do need to set up um, um, I do need to set up the projectile positions for every direction. Oh, and of course, I'm going to need to um, all right. So, oops, I'm to get that out to check. Um, Okay, well those are in the right place more or less. Um, I'm gonna gonna reset these because I don't I don't actually want to override the attack animation because it should be just because um, the gun itself doesn't have an animation. It's just whether um, just plays the animation of whether Jazz is moving or not. Well, that works. Um, it's a bit too fast. Um, still needs to be faster than Jazz, but it doesn't need to be that much faster. Um, I'll just set that back to 7.5. Uh, oh, and um, should have auto fire set so that we can just stand there and shoot.
Oh, actually, no, there is a... Um, tell a lie. There actually is... There must be a... Um, a shoot... Yep. Okay, so that's a shoot animation. I don't think there's a separate shoot animation for when... Um, Jazz is running. I think it's just meant to play the jazz movement. Um, in any case, uh, oh. I will. Actually, I won't worry about it now. I'll come back to that. Um, one thing I will need to add is just like the just like the carrots, um, I'm going to need to add the so that there are these ammo containers. Um, so if I turn off So those are um, those are grenade containers, and the difference with how they're not directly collectible. You are meant to shoot them, and then they become available. Um, So let's go back to here. And I'm going to turn off snap to grid. Let's have a look. So I guess we'll put it there. Um, if we go back to right, let's add um, a copy of this and we'll call this um, grenade top left. Well, how's everyone doing? Um, I hope I'm not um, uh, boring everyone too much. Okay, so that's 18 and 19, uh, that should be 4 and 35. So that should put the grenades, grenade containers all together. Uh, 
Um, let's. Huh. It's not actually aligned. That's weird. Oh, and I think I, I might know why that is. I'm, um, let's turn off everything except the... Yeah, okay, so in the original game, it looks like they actually overlap the tiles underneath. So instead of overlapping four tiles, they actually overlap six. But I think it's okay if in this version they're one pixel taller. Um, so just sort of have to work within the uh, limitations of the system. So I'm going to give that a try. Okay, so that's looking good. I think that... Oh, whoops. What did I do there? Um, did I have a gap in the map? Or is it a bug where... Um, yeah, I guess... Um, I guess if I pushed through at the right angle, it could have made... Um, could have pushed me right through the... Um, uh, the solid block, so I will, well, th through the slope. So I'm just going to, um, just for now, there might be a bug that I need to investigate, but uh, as an interim, I'm just going to have some solid blocks just to make absolutely sure you can't fall through there. Yeah, there is a weird bug where it seems to bounce a little bit. Um, I may need to look at that sometime, but... Oh! Okay, so there was some... Well, there's a couple of bugs there. So one is slopes don't seem to be working at all. And I wonder if it's... Um, if it has anything to do with those blocks. In fact, I, in fact, I think that's exactly why... Um, my my grenade blocks have a a setup with um they're still using the logic of the carrots which they shouldn't be um so in fact you shouldn't be able to interact with them at all by just touching them So I'm going to need to make a variant of this, which is um, in fact, all I need to do is if I go to grenade bottom left and then I'm just going to go on projectile hits. Oh, no, I do. I do actually need to make new code blocks. So. Um, uh, because I want to destroy the projectile as well, otherwise it's just going to go through and um, hit all of them. So I'm going to go projectile um, 
the L. Uh, and then I am just going to go projectile, destroy projectile, and then I can use my existing code blocks from there. So I can go, go to and then collectible BL. We are copy that Okay, so I think that works. So I should be able to just set um, that to projectile BL, projectile BR, projectile TL, and projectile TR. So I should be able to shoot those grenade containers now. Uh, which I can. Yep, so that's all working as expected. Um, I see there's a bit of a bug with the map there, so I might just do a little bit of tidy up there. Just fill in those gaps. And then I want to fill in the gaps down here as well. That will do. Well, I'm going to take a five minute break. I've been streaming for two hours. Um, I'll take a five minute break and then I might stream for just one more hour. So let's just get the um, countdown timer running.
<laughs> okay, um, let's get back to it. Well, um, <clears throat> now, what I thought about doing next is <clears throat> the grenades might be quite interesting to add. So I'm gonna have a um, I'm gonna add a condition. Actually, before I go any further, I'll just check that shooting still works. Just make sure um, there aren't any weird bugs with that. No, okay, so I'm not able to shoot. Jumping doesn't quite feel right, but I can't quite put my finger on it. I think it might be just just too fast compared to the original game. Uh, but never mind that. What I'll do is I will make it so that, um, yeah. So I was supposed to set that up to connect that to shoot. You know, I might, um, oh, no, that I think that looks okay. Um, oh, um, whoops, I accidentally closed Scorpion. Where's my bullet? So I've got it collision destroy, but because uh, most of my slopes don't have uh, solid surfaces around them, I should fix that. In fact, I think I'm going to... I'll replace most of... I think I'll replace most of the ground with solid... Uh, I just need sort of a buffer zone around where the slopes start. And then that means I shouldn't be able to shoot through those um, those areas. <coughs> I 
going to do the same for here, I guess. Tidy that up a little bit. Oh, and oops. Yeah, I think that would be good. Yep. Okay. Well, I think that's um, I think that's looking pretty decent. Um, I want to make it so uh, those bullets are actually a little bit, little bit low. I might um. Oh, of course, um, need to put that back. It's mostly when it's... Yeah, I'll use that. We use that position on all of them. Just cheating a little bit to um, get these all in the places that I want. In fact, I'm going to move that one pixel to the left, so that <clears throat> it's negative 21 on the left and then 21 on the right. Okay, so that projectile, the projectile positions are um, just about where I want them. Okay, so I don't need to set those anymore. I should maybe make a change so that even if you don't have these attack animations set, you can still set the projectile positions. So I'll make a note of that.
Okay, that will do for now. Um, so let's turn that off. And on shoot, I'm going to need to do some logic to say that if I've got... Um, if I have more than one grenade, it's greater than zero. Then, um, well, I want to decrease my grenade count, so that'd be grenade count minus one. Um, I'll want to, well, I want to return at the end of this because I don't want it to trigger that. But, oh, now I don't have a grenade actor yet, so I'll need to create. Okay, there we go, there's the grenade. It's a fair bit bigger than the um, bullet. I can't remember exactly how the bounce works in the original game, but we'll um, we'll toy with toy with it a bit. So object dial grenade. Um, it's um. Jazz grenade. And I'll delete that delete frame. Yep, and that's perfectly in the middle. That's where we want it. I'm just going to see what it looks like if I set that. Ah, oh, I still need to um, I'll copy that. Oh, jazz. To set the animation for all of these to the grenade. Um, I'm going to want it to be a CPU. Platform. So it's going to have some. Um, I have some gravity. So what have I got? So I've got 0 0.5 set as a gravity for that. Um, what should? How high do I want to make it jump? So what, oh, this needs to have a jump speed. So if I set the jump speed to just five, and set that to 16. Okay. So what twenty let's change that a bit. Okay, yeah, so that's about what I want it. So it has zero point five gravity, which is the same as jazz, and it goes has a jump height of about a tile. <coughs> Um, now I need to make a couple of changes. So one thing is I need to make it so that when um, uh, when we're we're shooting our um, a grenade when we're shooting a grenade block then we need to increase our ammo counter for the grenade which will be something like grenade count plus gonna be I don't know how much it is in the original game I'm just gonna say 20 <coughs> so we get 20 grenades if we um, <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we get 20 grenades if we shoot one of these blocks. It's probably more than what the original game gives, but that's alright. Um, so we get a grenade count. 
And then once we've done that, we should be able to shoot the jazz grenade. And hopefully I can get the upward arc working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select new. So new actor will be a reference to that grenade because that grenade is the newest actor. And there's a new look direction called, uh, I think it's just called jump. Jump upwards regardless of the direction faced. So that means that regardless whether the bullet is facing left or right, it should do the jump action. And hopefully if there's no weird bugs, that's all I need to do to get the grenades working. Yeah, um, well, there's a couple of problems, but in general they work. Um, one thing is they need to um, they need to fall faster than. So I'm going to set the gravity to 1. Um, I'll double the jump speed. And... Ah. Oh. Oh, yeah, okay, I think that will do. <clears throat> I also forgot that it shouldn't destroy when it hits the ground, it should bounce. And hopefully it will work on, is it going to work on sloped tiles or not? I'm not sure if it's going to work on sloped tiles or not. I did make some changes recently for um, uh, behavior with, um, um, oh. Well, that's not what I expected, but oh, actually, I know I know the real problem with grenades is the maximum full speed of I haven't actually got that set, so that should be at least the same as the ma maximum jump speed. So that so the the grenade wasn't actually because it had a maximum full speed of zero, it it wasn't actually falling. It wasn't actually going lower than the starting height. Yeah, that's um that's looking all right. Um it's a bit weird about how sometimes it goes up the um Oh, and does that work with this? It does. It does work with the grenade things. Yeah, there are some oddities, but I think it's you know other than that, and I could probably um, probably come up with a fix for that. Um, it's actually yeah. I mean, it's starting to actually feel like um, Jazz Jackrabbit. You know it. So far as, um, you know, what the guns feel like, what the jumping, running feels like, it, um, uh, yeah, I'm fairly happy with it. Um, one thing I will try to fix is, you see, it looks like the bullets are moving quite fast when I'm shooting from here, but when I'm chasing it, oh, and I'm out of ammo. Yeah, when I'm chasing it, the bullets look slow, and when I'm standing still, the bullets look fast. That's because the um, 
my speed isn't being transferred to the um, to the object. So I'm going to make some changes here. So I'm going to make it so that the speed left and the speed right of the bullet is only four. Uh, and I, I think I might I'll do something similar with the grenades. So I should actually be able to outrun the bullets and the grenades now. Uh, yep, so I can outrun the bullets and the grenades. Well, I can outrun the bullets at least. I should be able to outrun the grenades too. Uh, which is definitely something I don't want. <clears throat> so what I will do is... <clears throat> I'm hoping this is going to work. It may, maybe it won't, but I'll try it. So I'm going to go... I'm going to set the active speed directly. So I'm going to go new x speed is equal to new x speed plus actor x speed. Uh, it might not be completely precise because um, you know this is not a fractional number when movement speed could be fractional um, when he when jazz is speeding up or slowing down. But um, I'll just see what happens if I do that. No, actually that wasn't a good idea because like if I shoot a bullet when I'm still and then I chase after it, I can pass it. So yeah, never mind. I'll um I'll undo that. It was a worthwhile experiment doing, but yeah, for that reason there wasn't really any point in matching the actor speed to the player speed and I'll just Put the put, uh, yeah. I'll put, well, I'll put those to six. And put those to seven. I might just need to experiment a bit to see um, to uh, see how close I can get the projectile behavior to the original game. I guess it doesn't matter too much if I don't get it absolutely right. Uh, you know what? They should be um, they should be bouncing off those walls actually. It should have a bounce in every direction, and then I think after a second or so, it destroys itself. So I'm gonna go. Oh, actually, I should do that for this as well. So I'll just say destroy actor if it. If it's on screen for more than a second, that's probably a good thing to have across the board. I'll do that for this, but I'll make it so that if it hits anything, it bounces. Yep, so that's almost exactly like, um, I think that's almost exactly like the original game. Um, uh, yeah, so Bottle, I thought you might um, like the the projectile art, because I know um, uh, eggs were um, uh, something in Wonderboy that um, 
uh, needs to have an arc. Um, but yeah, so what I did was fairly straightforward. Um, you might be able to do the same Wonder Boy, but it's just a CPU platform uh, with my you know gravity speeds and all that. And then when I shoot it, then I set the direction to jump. So that means that it doesn't matter if it's moving left or right. It doesn't interrupt. It doesn't interrupt the left or right speed. It just um, uh, sorry. It doesn't interrupt the left or right speed. It just sets the the jump speed. Okay, um, well, I might as well fix that bug where if I shoot a slope that, because um, I, I don't want the bullet to go up the hill, I want it to bounce off the hill. It just looks a bit silly going up the hill like that. So um, I'm going to make a new code block, and I'm going to call this projectile um, hit slope actually I should um, I should rename that I'm gonna call it hit slope R and then because I'll need a different one for left um, so for most projectiles you should just destroy it because it should destroy the projectile rather than or should it No, I'll make it destroy the projectile rather than go through it. But um, I'll have a special case where if I go... If the actor type equals... Uh, jazz Grenade... Then, oh, sorry, not not actor, uh, projectile, because it's the projectile that we're testing on. So, oops. Uh, so if I go projectile type is jazz grenade, then we, well, we don't want to destroy it. We want to return. But on top of that, I will set it so that the actor direction is look up uh, sorry move upright so I want it to deflect off the hill back towards the player uh, and then wait right No, okay, sorry, I got this backwards. It should be move up left. Because if it's a right side slope, then we want it to move left. Otherwise, um, if we go, L, I am going to change that to move up right if it hits the left side slope. So if I then go to. Huh. No, I have got those backwards. So, so I've named this. Uh, okay, so down left. So uh, I will need to flip those back. So this is the hit slope L. Uh, check hit slope R. Just check L and R. So if it hits that one, then I want it to go up right. And if I hit that one, I want it to go up left, so I will flip those over. And then hopefully I can get the grenades bouncing off the the slopes. Yep, 
that that's perfect. That that works really well, I think. Um, yeah. Well, um, that actually worked better than I thought it would. So, um, so I am more than happy with that. Um, so I want to want to. Um, so I've got. I'll stay on the stream for another twenty minutes. Uh, something that might be useful is um, if I had an enemy. Um, and the enemies are quite big, so I might need to put it back into um, uh, twenty-five hertz mode, maybe. Um, yeah, because the enemies in Jazz Jackrabbit are huge. Fortunately, you don't fight many of them simultaneously. It's usually just one big enemy at a time. Um, and let's find let's find where the oh yeah, here we go. So so the enemies are here, and uh, so this level set I'm adapting is from the Christmas level pack and so the snow mongrel is the um, uh, is the um, is the monster and yeah kind of remarkably like these monsters only show up in one level in the entire game um, so I think some of these other, like earlier in the game, you got these turtle goons, and they, they appear in a bunch of different levels, but it's Christmas pack. It has a few different levels, but the monsters are all, they don't reuse them at all. They just use them in this one level, and then they don't ever use them again. Um... Anyway, so let's um, let's get rid of the background. Now, my memory might not be correct, but I believe that how the snow mongrel worked is that it was idle for a few frames, and then it would do this sort of dash dash towards the player. So it is going to take me just a oops. It's going to take me just a couple of minutes to take out all these sprites. Yeah. I'll make a subfolder. A snow mongrel. Call it idle one. Idle two. Uh, I might just use those just to get them in the game. So let's um, enemy snow mongrel. So let's call this um, uh, snow mongrel idle R. And let's align them. Well, that is a that is a big big sprite. Um, huh. Oh, I put the wrong one on. Okay, I should have put idle one. Let's drag that to the start. Um, we can delete that frame. That's running way too fast. Let's slow that right down. Oh, I need to do that in both frames, I guess. OK. 
Okay, um, and I'll copy that snow mongrel idle lift, uh, and I will just flip it both frames. Actually, um, slightly misaligned on that version. That's better. So that slobbering mutt is just. Um, get it a bit better aligned between left and right. Okay, so um, I know there's one right near the start of the level because it's basically the first thing that you face. Um, in fact, it's showing two of them. So I'll put one here. There. And let's um, let's give that a go. Okay, so we've got a slobbering monster there. Um, and what are we going to do with them? Um, well, for one thing, we need him to look at the player. Also, we're going to need some um, logic for handling the dash. Uh, I will, well, to start with, I'll, um, I'll get the rest of these frames out. Let's close some of these tabs so I don't open any more.
So seven dash animation frames. Let's make a new one. Snow mongrel dash right. Oh, okay, that was weird. I know that happens sometimes, but I'm not entirely sure of the cause of it. That is a really cool animation. Um, it's a shame they only ever used that on one level of the entire game. And even then it was, like, not part of the main game, but part of the, um... Well, I mean, it was part of a Christmas demo, so it was like the Lemmings Christmas demos, but for Jazz Jackrabbit. Though they did eventually... Like, I think if you got the CD-ROM of Jazz Jackrabbit, you would get these levels as... Um, part of the game. Just move that a little bit. Fortunately, I'm not quite sure how... Like, I'm not totally sure of the alignment of the animation. Try to frame delay of 10 and just see what it looks like. Looks a little bit slow there, but... Um, it might look okay when it's actually moving. Actually, now there's a problem, um, because I, ah, oh, because I want it to start and stop move, I guess, I only want it to move on certain frames, but I can make it stop moving here. Oh, in fact, I don't, I don't even, I don't even know why I put those frames in there, those are the idle ones, I guess I thought they were part of the animation, but. I can make it um, move during those dashes. And let's flip all of these. Okay, um, oh, I should check my chat. Well, uh, yeah, sorry, um, sorry you're not, um, I haven't been doing so well, uh, Mixel, but, um, I'll definitely, um, I'll definitely put this video up on YouTube. Um, I'm quite happy with what I've managed to achieve. Um, so, yeah, I think it might be quite a useful resource for anyone that sort of, um, you know, working on a game like this. Uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, Essa Bottle, um, uh, thank you very much for the kind words. Um, uh, 
Anyway, um, so at this bit here, uh, there are um, um, yeah, this bit here. There are two sort of two ways I can manage it for um, uh, because it this no mongrel has two states. It's idle for a few seconds. And then it goes into dash mode. Um, and again, there's two ways I can handle it. I can either have one actor that does everything, or I can split it into two actors. Um, it may be best if I split it into two actors. Um, Oh, and that's going to need to be CPU platform. Um, I'm just going to copy all of those same settings as Jazz himself. Five. Um, uh, I'll take out the idle animation so that it doesn't have, well, that, that isn't idle. So it need to have set. So that will be a dash and dash left, dash right. Okay. Um, and I'll add two code blocks here. So I need um, a snow mongrel dash end. And all that's going to do is um, actor set type to snow. So at the end of uh, do reset movement, do reset animation. Yep. So at the end of the snow mongols dash, then I want to set it back to Snow mongrel dash end. Yep, okay. Um, and then I want a handler for um, I want a handler for when it's idle. So I'm going to call it snow mongrel handler so I need to do two things here one is um, I need to have the actor facing jazz so I can go um, if so I can go if actor X is less than player X so that's to say if the player is on the left, sorry, if the actor is on the left of the player, then I want to go actor set direction and I just want it to look to the right. Otherwise, I want it to look to the left. And then I will go in condition. Well, that's the first thing. So, and um, the second thing is, um, and I'll make a note of this. Um, countdown until dash. So, I'm just going to go. I'm going to use an active variable. So, I'm going to go uh, set variable actor bar one. So yeah, the active var one is an act 
if that's specific to the current actor. So, for example, I'm gonna I might have like twelve of these mongrels on the level, but um, this countdown timer is only going to affect one at a time. It's only going to affect the specific one being updated, the specific one that um, I can see. So I'm going to increase it. Um, and then I need to do a condition. So if active R1 is greater than We'll make it two seconds. Then, um, well, first of all, I'll set that active R1 back to zero because I want to do this again when the dash is over. And then I'm going to go actor. Um, Direction and oh, actually no, I, uh, that's not what I want to do. I want to do actor set type, and the type is going to be Mongol dash, and I'm resetting the movement and animation, so that should start to dash when that timer gets above a hundred. Uh, and then I just need to go here. I'm going to use my handler. And let's see if that works or not. Whoops, that didn't quite work. Okay, so there's a few bugs there. Um, I think one of them is possibly because... Uh, oh, I'll need to check the collision box. Yeah, okay, so the collision box is a bit weird. Or it doesn't quite fit the... Uh, how am I going to do this? Well, I should have a... Uh, how big should I make the collision box? Yeah, that's what I'll, I'll do to start with, as I'll set it 24 by 24, and then I'll make it more or less centered. Um, and I'll do the same thing here. Okay, so collision box is the same on both entities. Um, for consistency, this should also be a CPU platformer, even though it doesn't move at all. Well, even though that one doesn't move at all. Um, but that doesn't have any left or right speed. Um, I don't think there will be a situation where the idle one can fall, but just in case. Uh, and then 5 is way too fast. Uh, as we saw, I might make that two. And then, uh, were there any other problems? I don't know. Uh, but I'll give it a go and see what happens. Oh, uh, yeah, I can see a problem with my animation is it's supposed to have a bit of an arc, a bit of a jump arc. And they might have done that by using animation offsets. Um, but, I mean, I can actually do the same thing here. Yeah, without using animation offsets, just using the, the jump ability. So... I don't want it to jump that high, that would be freakishly high, but I might make it, uh, yeah, I think that's about, that will be about right. 
Uh, so the mongrel should actually jump. Uh, I'm going to change the that to bounce so that if he hits a wall, he will bounce off the wall rather than um, just slam into it. And then I'll need to make some change to my handler. So I'll need to re re repeat this condition because... What do I? No, actually I... I don't need to do that. I can just, with set direction, I can just go jump. So that just adds a jump to the movement without resetting the horizontal direction. Um, oh, and I think the, the mongrel is just a little bit slow, so I might might put it as three because it's just a bit too easy to dodge. I can't remember that I can't remember very well how um, how the mechanics of the mongrel worked in the original game. But, you know, at some stage in the future I can always come back to this and then just tweak it until it feels right. Uh, that didn't work very well at all. Uh, yeah, I think 8 pixels is just way too low. He really needs to jump something like 32 pixels. But in general, it's not too bad. Um, if I jump, jump speed to six. Yeah, I think that might be a little bit more impressive. Um, okay, yeah, the problem is just the gravity is too much, so I'm going to half the amount of gravity, and then I'll need to half the jump speed again, I guess, so. So that way, um, four, yeah, I'll try that. So that way, um... Um, uh, that way it should remain in air a bit longer. So the jump should have a smoother arc. Which it does. It's not too bad. Um, yeah, I'd say that... I mean, that's okay. That that will do. Um, just gonna... Oh, I didn't, um, didn't expect that, but I should have, um... I'll just see if I can get them to jump. Whoa! Okay. See if I can get this one to jump off the the side there. Trick him into jumping off. Yep. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh. Um, Mixer, well, I'm not sure if you were awake when I got the um, grenades working, but I was. Um, you can see, I was pretty happy with. Um, how they worked, getting them, um, you know, bouncing off um, slopes like that. Okay, uh, Griffin says, um, jump movement might uh, enact a jump vertically, right? But if there's already a move, already an X movement going, will it jump in a diagonal arc? Um, the short answer is yes, because uh, this is this jump movement is a special case so it says jump upwards regardless of direction face so it just it doesn't matter if you're like standing still or if you're moving left or moving right it will jump upwards if you just want it to jump straight up doesn't matter you know how you're moving you just want it to go straight up and down then you would use move up or if you want it to jump to the top left even if it's facing right for example then you just move up left it Jump is a special case just to say, just to set the the y speed without affecting the x speed or the x direction. Okay, well, um,
Oh, uh, thank you, Mixel. Um, well, I've been streaming for just over three hours. Um, it's after one in the morning here. I think this is probably a good place to wrap it up. Um, I'll make the stream available. I guess after I've slept, it should be um, uh, I should be able to um, transfer it to YouTube. Um, yeah, I guess I don't really have anything else to show. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll leave it there. Um, I don't really have anything else to show in Scorpion at the moment, uh, and then maybe in maybe in another day or two I'll um, I'll do a bit more on this. Okay, well, um, uh, thanks to everyone for um, uh, joining the stream, and um, I hope to um, see you all again soon.